presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are so. Last night, starting pitching, slick fielding, and just the right amount of offense added up to an impressive Braves win. Tonight, Atlanta hopes to play the role of the spoiler against a Giants club still clinging to Western Division title hopes. All the fun gets underway tonight in the city by the bay. It's the Braves and the Giants from AT&T Park next. Well, on days like today, you know exactly what Tony Bennett was talking about. A beautiful afternoon and evening here in San Francisco and a packed house gathering at AT&T Park for game one of a weekend series between the Braves and the suddenly slumping San Francisco Giants. Hi again, friends. Chip and Joe, welcome to the ballpark. Our second look at Bruce Boshi's San Francisco club. Joe, we saw them early in the season. The Braves and Giants split four games at Turner Field, but it's a different San Francisco ball club that isn't hitting well and, frankly, not pitching like they expected. They're not doing a whole lot right right now, Chip, and they've fallen behind the Los Angeles Dodgers, and that's got everybody a little nervous here in the Bay Area because this is a good Giants team. They just can't seem to keep everybody on the field. They can't keep everybody healthy. And uh, when you don't have Hunter Pence playing every day, every day kind of inspiring everybody, that's a problem, too. But Jeff Samarja has got the ball, a big free agent signee. He's got a double digit win total. They need him to be a starter and a stopper tonight. Gave him big money to come in here and be a guy that was second or third in the rotation behind Madison Bumgarner. And he got off to a great start. He throws hard. He's got a good cutter. He's got a decent slider. But midway through the season, things took a turn for the worse. You're seeing some action from his last start, which was outstanding against the Mets his last time out. Seven innings. He had a no-hitter into the seventh. Gave up only two runs. But the beginning of the year, while it was very good, his last 15 starts have not been so good, and they need him to get back on the beam if they're going to win the division. The Giants are seeing a very different Atlanta ball club early in the season. The Braves couldn't hit. In the month of August, the Braves bats are red hot and they certainly showed that down in Phoenix. Well you knew that Ender Enciarte and Dansby Swanson were going to have a good time returning to play the Diamondbacks but it's these other guys that chipped in and did so much including the middle of the lineup Freddie Marquecas Kemp they are all red hot take a look across the board here 414 on base 404 average 792 OPS and 12 RBIs for Nick Marquecas in his last 15 games so the guy at the top is getting on base the guys in the middle are tearing it up and driving them in let's hope that uh, that continues here against the Giants as we said they're not playing so good Braves have a two and two road trip so far we'll see what happens this weekend in San Francisco a lot of the Braves success will be predicated on the play of Freddie Freeman a scary moment in Phoenix last night Kelsey Winger will update us on Freddie's status for game one here in San Francisco right after this.
Football is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. Welcome back to beautiful San Francisco where De La Cruz and the Braves hoping to stay warm and pick up a win in game one versus the Giants. Freddie Freeman giving Braves country a scared yesterday, tumbling over railing into the seats, but able to stay in the game and not only staying in the game, but he was picking up an RBI single in his next AB. That would bring in the first run of the game. And then after that, still playing hard, regardless of the pain, a hard slide into second to break up the double play so another run could score. And earlier we talked to Freddie. He made the joke that this field actually has a similar pit that one he fell into yesterday. So he said normally people roll balls on the field to see how it plays. We need to go out there and check out what it was to make sure it did not happen again. But we were concerned about how he would be feeling today, but he is back there in the lineup and he gave us an injury report on himself earlier today. You know, I feel OK. You know, I'm just sore. I told Snet before my last at bat, it got better, but it just felt like I was just getting hit by a pitch at multiple, like one after another. And, you know, it still feels like the today, but it didn't get worse. So, you know, I came in here, I, I did, went in the weight room, kind of worked out a little bit, and, you know, I feel good. So, well, good enough. So he said it felt like he was getting hit by a pitch, but he specifically told us it was like he got hit by Mauricio Cabrera, 100 mile per hour heater from 20 feet away. So you can know he's in pain today, but the Braves trying to get a win over the San Francisco Giants in game one in beautiful AT&T Park. Chip and Joe take it back with first pitch and starting lineups coming up in a few minutes.
Atlanta Braves Baseball is sponsored by Delta Airlines, your local Ford dealer, The Home Depot, and Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience sports. Boy, you thought traffic in Atlanta was tough. <laughs> As we welcome you to San Francisco and beautiful AT&T Park where it is an absolutely crisp and refreshing night for baseball tonight. 62 degrees at first pitch as Jeff Samarja and the Giants take the field for game one of this series. A look at their defense Pagan Span and Gorky Hernandez a former Brave in the outfield. Connor Gillespie Brandon Crawford Joe Panic Brandon Belt around the horn Georgia native Buster Posey is behind the plate. And Jeff Samarja is on the mound. Samarja Joe, as you mentioned a few minutes ago, beginning to pitch now like they thought he was going to pitch all year long for San Francisco. Well, again, he got off to a great start, seven and two in his first ten starts with a 2.84 ERA in the first two months. He had a real bump in the road because he was having trouble with teams really teeing off on his fastball. Everything he throws is hard, uh, fastball, cutter, slider. And that's when they started working on a different pitch that was maybe more of an off speed pitch. Dave Rigetti, uh, Mark Gardner worked with him on a curveball that he said he used to throw and he had abandoned it. And they, he's throwing a spike curveball that's given him another off speed pitch. And you saw the numbers in recent days. That's the reason why. So, a new look for the main man on the mound for San Francisco tonight. And he'll have to tangle with the Braves offense. It's averaging over five runs a game this August. And it starts with Ender and CRT at the top of the order. Garcia's second. Freddie Freeman. Boy, great to see him back in the order tonight. He loves hitting in this ballpark, too. Matt Kemp, Nick Markakis, Tyler Flowers, Jace Peterson, Dansby Swanson will play before a packed house tonight. And Joel De La Cruz is on the mound. And the umpires tonight, Laz Diaz behind the plate, Corey Blazer at first. Our pal, Stu Surewater, is at second base. He'll be behind the mount, behind the plate on. Sunday he might be behind the mound too. you never know Jeff Nelson's a crew chief he's at third a good crew all the way around and a good night for baseball we always love coming back to AT&T Park love this place great ballpark great vistas hopefully a great weekend's worth of baseball for the Braves starts tonight Ender in CRT is ready so Samarja and here we go we're underway a strike. Ander Inciarte's reached in 33 of his last 34 games. And batting 280 now. And that's fouled away. As we mentioned in our opening comments, these two teams have really flip flopped the way they're playing. At the end of May and early June, the Giants were rolling. The Braves couldn't hit. All of a sudden, that has shifted around. And the Braves' bats have really come to life. And a shot down the right field line. That's a fair ball and headed for the corner. Ander around first on his way to second. Gorkis Hernandez got to it quickly. His throw offline and Ender leads off with a double to start the game. Picking up where he left off in Phoenix. He was 9 for 20 in the series at Chase Field. Got something off speed down the middle. Might have been just a, a straight change, but he raked it. Samarja throws anywhere from 92 to 97 with that cutter and curveball and coming off a great start against the Mets. Let's see if Adonis Garcia can get enter to third or get him in. Garcia's red hot. He's riding a nine game hitting streak. He's hit two homers in that stretch and has 11 hits in those nine games. Well, Samarja's big ERA innings are the first and second. He's a slow starter, too. He has a 540 ERA in those two innings. So maybe the Braves can get on the board early. And when you look at Inciarte, Garcia, Freeman, and Nick Marcakis, in the four game series in Atlanta those four men combined to go eight for fifty six at the plate. A good shot of jumping in front here in the first tonight and there's a bouncer toward the shortstop and Ciarte with a bad base running play is going to be thrown out at third base. That 
was easy pickings for Brandon Crawford. One out. Now it was not a good break by Ender. It just generally wasn't a good idea. I know he's trying to make something happen. He made a mental mistake last night throwing to the wrong base in center field, and here a base running mistake cost the Braves a runner in scoring position. So let's see how Freddie Freeman swings the bat in the early innings tonight. Poked down the left field line and headed for the seats. I would assume, Joe, the challenge for Freeman tonight will be a lot more difficult than last night. Inside Chase Field, warm, dry weather. Not the case tonight here in San Francisco. No, nope. cool and damp. And if the Giants saw any of that replay last night, I would be tempted to challenge him inside to see if he could turn on the ball. Not, I wouldn't pitch him away. See what they do. Swing and a high fly ball to right. Gorky Hernandez back up against the wall. Can't get it. Garcia's on his way to third, and he'll stop there. Freddie Freeman with a long double to right. And the Braves have him second and third now with one out. I thought this was getting out of here for a minute. Hanging curveball, the one he's been in. Adding to his repertoire. And off the fence, Hernandez couldn't get there in time to try to make a catch. So the play at third, looming big already, saved Samarja a run for the moment. Matt Kemp, the former Dodger, former Padre, greeted with a standing boo by the packed house. And a breaking ball in for a strike. That's our Academy Sports leaderboard tonight. Look at those career totals <laughs> against the Giants. And those aren't just his numbers. Those are all active players. He's first in all those categories. Pitches some arches thrown in the inning have come in this at bat. Kemp's got a 10 game hitting streak of his own working. 0 oh 2, 1 out. Samarge is 31 years old now. 6'5, 225. Went to Notre Dame, was a terrific wide receiver in college football, if you recall. And a fifth round pick by the Cubs out of Notre Dame. It was in 06. And a swing and a miss. Kemp went fishing, didn't get it. And that's a big strikeout for Samarja. But he's not out of trouble yet. Marcakis is the Braves' batter. Mr. Posey had to do some quick glove work there on that pitch. Must have been a cutter. Seventy three RBIs for Marcakis and a two seventy two average. Great work with two outs. Let's see what he can do here in the first. Second and third for the Braves. And a strike, says Hans Diaz, home run. Braves have two doubles in the inning, but have not yet scored a run. Shot down the right field line, headed for the Braves' bullpen. Samarge is quickly ahead 0 2. A lot of wind up above the stadium roof line, too. Those flags above the scoreboard and stars and stripes out in right center. Starched.
The 0 2 pitch. He was spoiled by Nick, who will do it again. Marcher doesn't walk a lot of guys. He's got 41 in 160 innings. And about a 3 to 1 strikeout to walk ratio. He has given up quite a few homers, 22 of them. Posey with the side. Samarge is ready. And his 16th pitch. He's into the seats. Enciarte with a double, Freddie with a double. Left handers on the year hitting 265 against Samarja, but over his last five games, that's only been 179 average by left handers. So that breaking ball and his cutter has they've worked in tandem pretty well against lefties until tonight. Pitches out of a big mess, and the Braves bail him out with some shaky first inning base running. Two runners left in scoring position. Joe Aldea Cruz goes to work. No score in San Fran. Running choice binder in Ciarte for the Braves in the top of the first. Now Joel De La Cruz will go to work. Take a look at these numbers uh, out of the windup. No problem, really. A 223 average, only one homer. Good numbers, as you know. Good sinker, good changeup. So let's go to his Ford keys to pitching success tonight, because that 310 average with men on base would lead you to believe that he has a little problem pitching from the stretch. So he's going to have to work on that tonight and try to do a little better job with runners on base. And this is a perfect park for him. Ball doesn't travel well. And with his sinker, he ought to get a lot of ground balls tonight in this damp, heavy air. And he might be catching the Giants, as we've said a couple of times, at the right time. Ordinarily, AT&T Park is a big home field advantage for San Francisco. It hasn't worked out that way. They've actually dropped 10 of their last 15 games at home. So we'll see what happens with Denard Span leading off. Span with eight homers, 44 driven in, and a 272 average. Unlike many of his mates, Span is a hot hitter right now. 16 hits in his last 39 at bats. And that's in for a called strike. It's 0 and 2. I believe Bruce Boshi's in his 10th year already with the Giants. And three World Series titles. Oh, yeah. High 
fly ball hit toward left Kemp says he's got it and he does for the first out. De La Cruz last start came against Washington at home. Pitched into the sixth inning gave up six runs two walks four strikeouts and two homers. I know he's 0 and 6 with a 447 ERA but there have been a couple of starts where he's only given up one or two runs in the start and taken a loss too. Well you know we've talked a lot about Julio Tehran and Matt Whistler not getting run support in his first seven starts as a brave Joel De La Cruz has gotten a grand total of six runs of support. That won't be enough. Not usually. Spread out over six starts. Yeah. He's let a chance slip away here in the first. Here's Angel Pagan. And he takes a strike ball. No one won. Angel Pagan was hurt. They get him back. Uh, they get Pence back. And then Blanco gets hurt. Trevor Blanco's on the DL now. That's the man they're really concerned about, Hunter Pence. Surgically repaired hamstring, and it's been barking. My ball right. Arcakis is going to have room. Plenty of it. And that takes care of Pagan. Two flyouts for Buster Posey. I'm not going to say they can't win without him. It's just going to be awfully tough to win without Hunter Pence in the lineup every day. And if his hamstring is barking again, that's real cause for concern. Here's Buster Posey. Twelve homers, 60 RBIs for the Giants catcher. But he's in a power drought. He's not a hit a home run since July 16th. Chopper is foul at third. Buster back to the plate. The count nothing to two. The Giants do not hit a lot of home runs. Among the men in their lineup, Brandon Belt has the most on the lineup card. He's got 14 of them. And that's the lowest team leader in baseball, isn't it? I know at least in the National League. They've hit 103 as a club. 0 oh 2. Posey. The final line is a fan from Half Moon Bay, California, makes the catch. Well, probably drove up here in the fog to get here. Yeah, right? This place will get loud. They are into the game. Fans in San Francisco love their Giants. Everybody downtown's wearing the black and the orange. This is a lively place to watch a big league game. What a treat. Nothing and two. Ooh, Posey right back where it came from. Dana Cruz got a piece of it. No chance for Swanson with a bare hand. A couple of times this year, De La Cruz has been hit with batted balls. Let's see where this got it. That Jeff Porter's on his way out. That appeared to be on the ankle or foot. He's saying he's okay. Laz Diaz is making sure too. Oh yeah, it came up off the ground and hit the bottom of his foot, it looked like. Boy, what a difference two city of two cities. 101 yesterday in Phoenix and 61 here today. And Bubba decked out for it. <laughs> <laughs> we like to call this the all influenza tour. Mm -hmm. Here's Brandon Crawford. So the first three hitters on the lineup card for San Francisco swinging the bat pretty well. After Buster Posey, though, things get a little dicey. 
for the Giants. As Joe mentioned, Crawford hitting an unfamiliar spot cleanup tonight. And he's hitting 229 in his last 13 games. I don't know. Strikes. I don't know if he's been hitting cleanup that often. But sometimes for a guy who's hitting used to hitting lower in the order all of a sudden he starts pressing to try to do what a cleanup hitter is supposed to do but he, he hadn't been there very much. And remember he had a what was it a six or seven hit game about ten days ago seven I think seven. I think where he'd be without that. Good player. Gold glove shortstop. One ball, one strike. And a ground ball. Dansby to his right. His throw toward first is short hop. Freddie can't handle it. Buster Posey's going to gallop over to third base. And the Giants have runners at the corners now with two outs. That's going to be an infield hit for Crawford. Posey takes third on Dansby Swanson's throwing error. You get so used to Freddie catching everything over there that when one gets by him, it's like, what happened? So, two gifts for the Giants from the Braves in the first inning one on the base paths, one in the field. And now Brandon Belt is the batter. Belts the Giants first baseman. Marker for what's going wrong with the Giants in the second half. Well, with the Brandon Belt splits. Six for his last 35. It's kind of funny, unfortunately, for. Joel he got two fly ball outs and then he gets the ground balls that he wants and they turn into hits infield hits. First and third for San Francisco with two outs. Second baseman Joe Panic is on deck. Will Belt get a green light 3 0? I'm thinking yes. That's a good pitch. Good sinker. Another team mark that you could point to since the All-Star break. The Giants only hitting 221 with runners in scoring position. So when they do get opportunities, they haven't capitalized enough. And belts on that list too. Three balls and a strike. Line drive into center field. He came through with two outs here. That's going to score Posey, and the Giants have scored in the first inning. It's one to nothing. That was a sinker, too, but it started in the inner third and was basically sinking to the middle of the plate. So out of the stretch again. Granted, there was an error involved, but out of the stretch, 
More problems for Joel. So it's time to panic. Joe Panic is up, hitting 248. And Flowers couldn't corral that, and the runners move up. Tyler got crossed up. Oh, yeah. He was looking for a breaking ball and probably lucky that he got any leather on it at all. They're going to call that a pass ball. And that's unfortunate because of what was obvious. Yep. I always wonder why that happens that way. Pitcher makes the mistake, but the catcher's the man that's penalized. So, runners second and third now for the Giants. They lead 1 0. And a 1 0 count for Joe Panic. Oh, yeah. That slapped over third, base hit. That's going to score two more. Panic's around first on his way to second. It's 3 0 San Francisco. Sinker that was up. It kind of flattened out and stayed up in the zone. Panic picks up his 47th and 48th RBIs. Taking advantage of some good fortune on the part of Posey's base hit. And then, of course, the infield hit in an error. Well, this is exactly what the Giants wanted to see happen. Get off to a fast start with Samarja on the mound. While the Giants are playing the Braves, the Dodgers are hosting the Chicago Cubs. So at least on paper, advantage San Francisco. And they've taken advantage here in the first inning. Four straight two out hits. This is Connor Gillespie now. Roller hit toward Freeman at first. He's got it. And that retires the side. All the damage came with two outs. RBI hits by Belt and Panic. 3 0 Giants after a sloppy Braves first inning. National Dog Day. Fans outside the ballpark in McCovey Cove waiting for a splash hit on a crisp, cool late August night between the Braves and the San Francisco Giants. 3 0 San Fran after one inning. And it's time for our Tools from the Dugout brought to you by the Home Depot. Runs per game have been outstanding in the month of August. They've helped at least give a little bit of 
support to the starting pitching especially that has struggled. Average is better home runs are up. The offense has been carrying the club. So let's see if the Braves bats can put the first inning behind them and get after Samarja here in the second. Flowers Peterson and Dansby Swanson coming up. First off the plate one ball no strikes. Tell you something else he's not doing as much chip you know he had a little bit of the Cueto twist you know he turned and show you the number on his back before he came to the plate they cut down on some of that turn too because it uh, caused a lot of inconsistencies. I've always liked Samarja. I always liked his stuff. I couldn't figure out why he wasn't winning more games. Last year with the White Sox, he won 11 games. That was his career high. And parlayed that into a huge deal with the Giants. And his former teammate, Tyler Flowers, ahead in the count. Three balls at a strike. And had a good start. A leadoff walk after the Giants gave Samarja three in the first inning. Well, he was staggered in the first inning himself, and he was lucky to avoid any runs being scored. Chase Peterson, seventh on the lineup card tonight. See if he can send one over the Levi's landing and right. Starting a lot of hitters with that slow curve ball. Sharply hit past Gillespie at third base and Peterson's aboard with a clean hit. And that's three hits already for the Braves who have runners at first and second for Dansby Swanson. Three multi hit games for the young Brave shortstop in his first week in the big leagues. See if he can get his night in San Fran off to a good start. He's batting 276. Another off speed pitch. And on the first one. Low roller left side. Gillespie couldn't cut it off. Crawford did. Safe. Infield hit for Dansby, and the Braves have him loaded with nobody out. I don't think Gillespie did Crawford any favors there. In fact, he was about to field it. And I don't know if I don't know if Crawford called him off or not, but did you see Gillespie pull his glove back? Normally you want the third baseman taking that ball if he can get to it. Close but safe. So De La Cruz bats with the bases loaded. He's one for 11 as a hitter. Throw you a strike, Joel. Flowers, Peterson, and 
Dansby Swanson are all aboard. And not a strike. Good take. Two balls and a strike. We've seen Joel take some big swings. Pretty good, good swings. And that might have been one to cut, cut it loose on, and I don't know that he'll get another fastball. Angel Pagan is really shortened up in left. Spans shallow in center, big gap in left center. If Joel can hit it there. And now the 2 2 is bounced toward first. That is a fair ball. Play at the plate he is going to be in time to force Flowers. And Buster Posey wasn't sure where the dish was. But Belt came charging in, grabbed that baseball before it rolled foul. And they force Tyler Flowers for out number one. Tell you what he was doing. He was kicking the bat out of the way, Chip. And after he kicked the bat out of the way and then found Belt, that's when he was still trying to find the plate. So that's the first out of the inning. And a Cruz at first base now on the force play. Good speed at second and third for Ender in Ciarte. Doubled his first trip and takes a strike here. Ender with 12 multi hit games since July 30th. Has scored 30 runs in 39 games since the All Star break. What a great job he's done leading off. Swing and the count even a ball and a strike. A brisk, breezy night. One and two. And just now, Joel De La Cruz getting a jacket while he stands at first base. Job with the batting gloves on to get it zipped up. That's the pitch that he struck out Kemp and Marquecas on in the first inning with runners at second and third. Went back to it again on Inciarte, he didn't offer. Swing and a miss. Third strikeout for Samarja. The Braves had bases loaded, nobody out. Still bases loaded, but now two are out. That looked like the spike curveball and a beauty. Perfectly located.
All of his strikeouts have come with men in scoring position. And less than two outs on a couple occasions. As Joe told you, if you're going to get Samarja, the first two innings are the innings to do it. After that, if you don't, it can be a long night. One ball, one strike. Good time call. Tell you what that pitch is, I think that he threw to Kemp, Marquecas, and NCR, not in uh, but for those first two strikeouts, it might have been a split. They've offered, altered the grip on that split. It's not as deep in between his fingers as normal. They got him to move it out instead of between the two big knuckles to move it out between the first knuckle on the index and middle finger. And this was the knuckle curve that really went down and in. That split finger grip he's got is acting like a change up for him, too. Here comes the one two pitch. Line drive, Crawford's there, and that retires his side. Boy, that's heartbreaking. Atlanta had him loaded with nobody out but cannot break through, and Samarja survives the second. walk right now. This is an area where fans can walk right up to a chain fence and watch the game right behind right field. It's 75 fans at a time for free and you get to watch the game for three innings and then they'll usher in the next group. Now the cool thing for us is that this is going to be something that we're going to have at SunTrust Park. Derek Schiller told us when we took our tour that what they were doing was going around to all different sporting venues and getting some ideas and this was one of them. They're going to have two openings in the right field wall at SunTrust trust and they're going to call it below the chop and the Braves envision it as a gathering or party space. So Chip and Joe when you're looking to throw my 25th birthday party I would really like it to be there. I'm sorry Kelsey my, my headset wasn't working. Did you say something about 20. How, what, 25 if she, years if old? she brings that up again there will be no birthday party. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Joe and I have ties older than Kelsey as we get set for the home second. What a great idea though. The old knot hole gang as it yeah. were.
They really do it right here at AT&T Park. Giants up three nothing. Marquise Hernandez will lead off, and he takes ball one. Hernandez always a guy that had good speed, good outfielder, just didn't hit enough to stay at the big league level. Marquise Hernandez and the Braves are intertwined. You might recall he began his career as a Tiger. The Braves got him from Detroit with Jair Jurgens for Edgar Renteria. Then the Braves traded Hernandez to the Pirates in the Nate McLeod trade. And during this season, Hernandez had had a grand total of 78 Major League games with the Pirates and the Marlins. And he stays alive at 2 and 2. 8 o'clock Pacific time. We join you from AT&T Park. Gerald De La Cruz got the first two Giants, but then four straight hits turned into three first inning runs, and that's where we stand. Sharply hit, and Jace Peterson can't handle that. He came up holding his left wrist as that ball ricochets into shallow center field. That caught Jace flush on the forearm. And the Braves have committed their second error of this game. Well, couldn't tell if it cut hand or wrist. He's looking at more of it as hand. Either way, it's an error. And 11 of those for Jace. Samarja now. Might try to bunt, something he has not done very well. Already two errors tonight. They made one last night, which was the first one in about seven or eight games. Uh -huh. Marger with a bunt. Yeah, Cruz looked to second, but throw goes to first. Second sacrifice for the Giants pitcher. Gorky Hernandez in scoring position for the top of the order and one out. Yeah, it's a little bit odd for a guy that's making his 26th start to only have one sacrifice coming into this one. Span flat out to Matt Kemp in the first inning tonight. Span 32 years young. Giant signed him as a free agent to a three year contract. Slowly hit to the right side. Peterson's got that. And Span's out by a half step, runner to third, two outs. Now it's Angel Pagan's turn to hit. Angel Pagan has had quite a career. Yes, he has. 
Got to the big leagues in 2006 with the Cubs. Spent some time with the Mets. He's been in the Giants organization since 2012. Pagan has been you have to wonder how much better he would be had he not been hurt so much. Yeah they had to play one World Series without him as I recall. And that was when Gregor Blanco had yeah. a terrific run. He's had hamstring problems colitis a torn labrum in the shoulder oblique problems bad back. All dating back to 2006. Who did the. Mets get from the Giants for him. Wasn't it a swap of center fielders? Andres Torres. Before the 2012 year. Advantage Giants on that one. And then after the 2012 season, Pagan signed a four year contract which expires after this year. Ball one strike. Interesting note on Angel Pagan. First player in Major League history to hit his first two career homers on his birthday. July 2nd, 2006. His 25th birthday playing for the Cubs, and he did it against the White Sox. There's that 25th birthday thing again. Fly ball will hit and gone. An extra out becomes an extra hitter and two extra Giants runs. It's five to nothing. That was some kind of swing. That ball is running away from him. And he got the barrel of the bat out there and around that pitch and threw some top hand on it. Almost a splash homer. Now Buster Posey rips one to left and Kemp has to stumble and he makes the catch to retire the side. An error led off the inning. Pagan with a long homer to right, and the Giants lead 5 0.
Braves nothing. Boy, Atlanta let Jeff Samarja off the hook their first two times up. Big time. Those are his toughest innings to get through. He did somehow emerge unscathed, and he's got five runs to work with already. And here in the third, Freddie Freeman will get things started. Matt Kemp and Nick Markakis to follow. Freddie Freeman's first inning double matches his career high for extra base hits in a season. Now 65 of them this year for Freddie. Guys on Braves Live were talking about that before the game, and someone mentioned, think where the numbers might be if it weren't for those two dry spells that he's had during the year where he ran into a rash of strikeouts and just wasn't swinging the bat well. In fact, it was one of them was when the Braves played the Giants yeah. in Atlanta. He wasn't hit anything. Yeah, he's three for 15 in that series. One of the hits a homer. They've scored 10 runs, I believe, in the four game set back to Turner Field. Still managed to win two of the games, though. And that's a strike. It's two and one. Dodgers lead the Cubs 2 1 third inning. Here it's 5 nothing San Francisco Giants two games back out west. Won the first game of that series five to three and beat Samarja. He gave up five runs in five innings. Then Peavy shut him out on one hit. Remember that one. Then the Braves won five to four in eleven innings on a walk-off homer by Freddie that you mentioned. And then got shut out in game four by Mr. Bumgarner. A four hit shutout. And Bumgarner had a double digit strikeout game that day. And yeah. yeah. chased and didn't get it. Four strikeouts for Samarja. One away. And hit a homer. Oh. That sounds like a Madison Bumgarner game, doesn't it? Yep. Here's Kemp. Uh, they love him here. Kemp might be wearing Atlanta colors, but for these fans in San Francisco, he'll always be a Dodger. Which means he's going to hear it from the San Francisco crowd all the series long. Kelsey talked with Matt about that on the dugout bench before the game. Kemp knows the deal. He's been through it before, and he's done excellent work in his career against the Giants, as we showed you, and that's kept many in the crowd off his back. He struck out his first time up. And he didn't get that floater. One and one. Jeff was out early again today along with Gordon Beckham going through a lot of agility drills with Brad Scott getting some work in before the game and we're told that Kemp already has a postseason workout lined up with Phil Falco the Braves strength and conditioning coach that pitch backed up don't remember Samarja throwing anything like that his first two innings tonight but he strikes out Kemp for a second time. He's got five whiffs already. That might have been a, a splitter. Two up, two down. Here's Markakis. He struck out his first time up. No 
most hitters Jeff has struck out this year is nine. He's done that twice. His career high in strikeouts came against the Braves. He struck out 13 on April 7, 2013. Jumped ahead of Nick quickly, 0 and 2. Well, everything works off his fastball. When you, when you can throw 95, mid 90s, even bump it up a little bit above that on, on occasion to really have five pitches now to go to at this spike curveball and a, an adjusted split finger pitch and a circle change. Serve towards center, but right at Denard Span. Easy inning for Jeff Samarja. He holds serve, and the Giants have a big lead. Where the San Francisco Giants franchise wasn't among the healthiest in the major leagues. When Brandon Crawford was a little kid who was born in Mountain View, California, this picture was taken of him in the local newspaper as one of many fans who were hoping to find a way, somehow, some way, to keep the Giants in San Francisco. Well, many years later, Brandon Crawford recreated that photo. That is great. Now at the ripe old age of 29 he is playing for and playing at an all star level for his beloved hometown Giants. He very nearly moved from San Francisco to Tampa St. Pete. And that didn't happen because the then ownership of the Giants at the time found a way to privately finance the construction of this magnificent ballpark in the China Basin area in San Francisco. All they've done is win three world championships in the last five years. The stadium did wonders for the organization, for the fans. They opened this place in 2000. They have topped three million in attendance in 14 of their 16 years here. They have. A 471 game consecutive sellout streak working. And the Giants became the fastest team to draw 50 million atten in attendance in big league history. Really? 50 million. They did it in 16 years. It took the Orioles 17 years to get to 50 million fans at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. 
And not only has this ballpark rejuvenated the China Basin area, everything around here on the San Francisco waterfront is different. This was all warehouses and not in good shape. Condos, shops, restaurants. The California light rail has a station right across from the ballpark. What a wonderful thing that is. What an advantage that is. And as I understand it, the Golden State Warriors are moving over here, aren't they? Right down the right field line. Two balls, two strikes for Crawford. And that's taken high. I'm not sure when does, uh, let me ask Charlene, when does the uh, Warriors Stadium open? Or uh, arena? Hasn't started yet, but it's going to be down the right field line past the big bridge, right? Yeah, okay. Swing and a miss. There's some movement from De La Cruz. Crawford's retired to start the Giants' third. Giving up five runs in the first two innings means the managers probably ask you to hang in there and you're going to need to give us a couple more before we think about taking you out. Why Matt Whistler's game was so huge for the Braves last night. Oh, was he terrific? His return from the minors. First start for the Braves since July 17th, where the starter went seven innings or more. Brandon Belt, 64 RBIs, a first inning hit. Moving in the game's first run. That runs into the seats foul. Yeah, and the way he's been going, that was a welcome sign for Bruce Bochy, too. Well, it's another big leaguer who was once drafted by the Braves, but chose not to sign. Braves took him in the 11th round in 2007. He went to college and played at Texas. So that orange fits him nicely. There was a time where if, if anybody suggested that they'd rather have Anthony Rizzo than Brandon Belt that looked at you like you were crazy. Rizzo was struggling from Boston to San Diego and it wasn't until he really found a home in Chicago where his numbers began to eclipse those of Belt. If there's a knock on Belt I don't think it's a fair one. It said he doesn't hit 20 home runs a year and first base is considered a power position. Tough ballpark to do it in. Exactly too. right. 18 of them is career high last year, and a career high 68 driven in. And he didn't get that. De La Cruz finding some magic. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. And here's Joe Panic, who doubled down the left field line his first time. Well, let's go back here. The first three innings, he got the first two guys out, and then Posey reached on that infield hit. He proceeded to give up three more hits, working out of the stretch, and. Ultimately three runs. Runner reaches on an error in the first inning, so he's immediately in the stretch. They bun a runner over, and with two out out of the stretch, he gives up a homer to Pagan. Working out of the wind up here, two strikeouts, looks sharp. So there is something to that batting average against him with runners on and with nobody on. Off the end of the bat foul left side it's nothing and two.
Braves fans here tonight. Giants have jumped on them five zip. Popped up. And Kemp is there and puts it away. Four a one two three third inning. We go to the fourth. It's five nothing Giants. Francisco Giants lead 5 2 nothing. Time for our Toyota Tweet of the Week. And this week's question is What's your favorite park to watch a Braves game? Tweet us at Fox Sports South using hashtag pick the park, and your answer could be read during Braves Live post game show. You know, there's something else beyond just the obvious temperature change between Phoenix and here, but these two ballparks are so vastly different. You go to a game at Chase Field and in Phoenix and the upper deck is so massive and high and sprawling and this is all so close to the field. It's a, a wonderful setup here. Well, In many ways isn't this setup and this field going to be as this ball is hit on the ground by Flowers to Crawford. Isn't this going to be somewhat reminiscent of what SunTrust Park will be like with a cantilevered design and the fans right on top of the playing surface. I think that's the effort of SunTrust, yeah, is to bring everybody closer to the field and more intimate. It's a smaller capacity. 41.5, yep, thousand plus. So is this ballpark your favorite? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Favorite one to come to. I like Minnesota with Target Field had a very limited footprint upon which to build this stadium. And boy, they done it magnificent. Beautiful views of San Francisco Bay, Oakland off in the distance. And they've got Ghirardelli chocolate here. That's tough to beat. I like those overhead shots too of the stadium because it gives you a real good idea how it was the stadium is carved right on the bay. No balls, two strikes. And a liner and it foul. Well, there is no such thing as a perfect ballpark. There you go. That shot. Got the little league wiffle ball field for the kids. You see in the lower center portion of the screen, right next to the big Coke bottle that has a couple of slides for the kids to entertain themselves during the game. But the designers forgot one critical feature when they got ready to open the doors, and how horrified that person must have been. At least the baseball operations people must have been when they said, okay, this thing looks great. Love it. We're ready to go. By the way, where are the bullpens? 
Huh? What's well, a bullpen? And the original plan was not to have the bullpens in foul territory like at Wrigley Field, but there was no other place to put them, so that's exactly what had to happen. Not ideal, but I don't even think twice about it anymore. Good take there. Two balls, two strikes. Or Jace Peterson, who singled in the second. Brewers ran themselves out of the first, had the bases loaded. Nobody out in the second and couldn't score. Giants got three in the first, two in the second themselves, and that's where we stand. Five to nothing. Dansby Swanson had an infield hit. He waits on deck. Peterson draws a one out walk. Good at bat. Second walk for Samarja. And he'll go to the stretch. He got ahead of Jace and couldn't finish him off. Not too shabby your first week in the big leagues and you're hitting 300. That's what Dansby's doing. Runner goes. The pitch is a strike and Buster Posey dropped the baseball. So Jace Peterson steals his fourth base. And that's tough to do against Buster Posey. He's throwing out 44% of base stealers. He never had it. No. A walk, a stolen base with one out. Swanson now behind 0 and 2. Bouncing ball toward Crawford. He'll charge and throw on the run. And De La Cruz hits with Peterson at second, two outs. These orange jerseys the Giants are wearing tonight with that big script. Giants written across the front. Kind of remind me of John the Count Bonifusco. It's kind of strange after our flight in from Phoenix when we arrived early this morning, we made our way from San Francisco International. To our team hotel downtown. Even in the early hours, there's still lights flickering over an old candlestick point, but old candlestick park is no more. The weather's the same, the location's different. As the 49ers have a new football only stadium. Of course, the Giants playing in AT&T Park. The only flickering I saw was in the back of my eyelids at two in the morning. That was about the only flickering I saw. So Arjo wanted the call, did not get it. And the count is two and two. He 
it has not been easy for Samarja. He's thrown a lot of pitches. He has won one, two, three frame, and now the pitch. Boshi very quietly got a contract extension three more years added to his deal. Oh. Congratulations to him. I believe he's now the highest paid manager in the game. And worth every penny. Pitch. He's popped out of play. Well I read somewhere tonight that there's ten. Ten managers in history that have three world championships. Including him. And the other nine are in the Hall of Fame. I was just about to say, I don't think that's going to be a question of if, but a question of when for Bruce Boshi. Ground ball to short, and it hits the base runner. He's out, and that's the inning. I'd say that the Braves on the base pass tonight have had a few too many adventures. Peterson's out on the batted ball. Dela Cruz will get credit for a hit, but that ends the inning. It's 5 0 San Fran. Taking home a commemorative bobblehead presented by Grady Hospital. The first 20,000 fans get a Chipper Jones 2000 All Star Game bobblehead on Saturday, September 10th, when the Braves take on the Mets. Go to Braves.com/slash tickets today. Game one of three with the Giants. It has been all San Francisco. Jace Peterson with an error with the leather. He got hit by a batted ball a moment ago. The Braves have made two errors that have given the Giants. Extra opportunities to hit, and San Francisco has cashed them in. They lead 5 0 here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Especially when uh, we got to enjoy that game last night so much. Crisply played, well pitched, timely hitting. Connor Gillespie leads off. He bounced out to Freddie Freeman to end the Giants first. The middle that hit off the right side of the mound, but Dansby Swanson stayed with it, makes the play, and that's out number one. Five straight retired by De La Cruz after the Pagan homer.
Wow what a comeback in Miami tonight. We were just about to go on the air when we saw the Padres take a 6 2 lead over the Marlins but Miami staged a furious comeback at home to win 7 6 tonight over San Diego. Did Frenchie do anything for the Marlins tonight. He went three for four. Wow. Chris Johnson another former Brave hit a ground rule double to win the game. Miami's trying to make the wild card. Big fight with the Pirates and the Cardinals and if the Giants keep stumbling they might have to start looking over their shoulder at the fish. James Peterson over the shoulder makes the play. That takes care of Gorky Hernandez for the second out. Smart to put the bunt down his first time up. Maybe. He doesn't bunt much because he's been swinging the bat pretty well. Three doubles, seven RBIs. <laughs> Did you see the? The disgust there off of Tyler. <laughs> He's complaining to Samarja. He got crossed up again somehow with nobody on base. <laughs> oh, give me another ball. Rip to left. And off the base of the wall. Samarja with a two out double. His fourth double of the year. Just watching him take batting practice today. Teed off on that high fastball. Giants pitchers like to hit on the day they pitch. Not all starting pitchers do, but the Giants do, and Samarja likes to hit, and he was having a good time. Good way to get loose. Third extra base hit for San Francisco. Samarja is aboard for Denard Span, who's 0 for 2. Five runs, six hits for the Giants. No runs, five hits. Two costly errors for the Braves, who've left six on base. And the base is loaded, nobody out in the second, and could not score. Thing that will help De La Cruz is this crisp, cool weather. We have seen him really work up a lather back in Atlanta. And he's not afraid to go to the dirt or the rosin bag to try to get an extra grip. He's ready to make his 63rd toss of the night. And Ray's bullpen will begin to stir the pitch. That was taken low. Working out the stretch again. Yep. See how it works out. John Gant's going to start to loosen up.
Span now will face a full count. Mets got a big win tonight. Beat the Phillies 9 4 at home. Bartolo Colon was the man that started that game for New York. If Bartolo went three and a third innings or better tonight and won the game, he will be the Mets season leader in wins, innings pitched, and starts. Goodness. No one would have predicted that, would no. they? Mets started play three and a half games out in the wild card. The pitch is bounced foul and out of play. And the point is that if he did win, he had to have gone at least five innings. So yeah, he started. I don't know if he was the man that got the victory. And he did, and he went seven. With all that pitching for him, for it all to fall back on him to lead the team in those categories, that says a lot about how they've had to deal with pitching injuries. And not just in the pitchers. Three balls, two strikes. Ground ball up the middle, a base hit. Samarja on his way to third. He's going to get waved. Enciarte's throws coming to the plate. Samarja skips over the baseball. And Denard Spain with an RBI hit takes second on the throw. And the Giants now enjoy a 6 0 lead. Count. Sinker or change up left belt high. Ender came up firing. But again, wide of the mark, overthrows the cutoff man, allows another man to get into scoring position. Ender's thrown out a ton of guys, but you've still got to remember the fundamentals. He made a throwing mistake in the game last night. So it's 6 0 San Fran. We are in the sixth. Roger McDowell with an extended visit. We'll get John Gant a few more tosses. De La Cruz with 66 pitches so far on the night. By the way, I want to send out congratulations to the Gulf Coast League Braves. Apparently, the Gulf Coast League Braves have won their division. A.J. Przinski was their D.H. yesterday. As he's coming back from his hamstring problems, he went one for three. And A.J. today said that when they won the championship, the tab at Zaxby's was on him. Yeah, I'm sure it was. And it just shows you what a little leadership can do. That's exactly right. He said, we're going all in. We're going to celebrate. We're going to pop the sparkling grape juice because everybody's <laughs> under 21 on the team except him. <laughs> we look forward to getting AJ back. Might join us when the Padres come to town. The pitch is lifted into center, and that will retire the side. Pagan flies out. The Giants pick up another run on two more hits, and we're off to the fifth where it's all Giants in game one.
Baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. There's a very special fan here in San Francisco on the big scoreboard. They're honoring General Chuck Yeager, Air Force record setting test pilot, who is enjoying the Braves and the Giants tonight. Getting a standing ovation. What a life. So Bruce Boshi and his Giants enjoy a 6 nothing lead. And Bruce is out talking with Jeff Nelson and Laz Diaz as Samarja completed his warm up tosses. Not sure what that was about. Yeah, I'm not sure either. So a big lead for Samarja. He leads six nothing. One, two, and three coming up for the Braves. And this one's bounced off the pitcher's glove, out to panic, throw to first, and in time. Every bounce is going the Giants' way. A one, four, three bounce out by NCRT. Yeah, that was headed for center field. Adonis Garcia and 0 for two night. John Gant continues to loosen in the pen, so one can surmise the night is probably over for Joel De La Cruz. Yeah, don't forget that Adonis hit a line drive rocket that Crawford speared for the last out when the bases were loaded. Nine game hitting streak for the Braves third baseman. He's 0 for 2 so far tonight. How about that defensive swing? And Gillespie with a throw to first, two out. That was definitely a get off me swing on a pitch on an 0 2 count. I haven't seen Adonis take a swing anything anywhere remotely close to that one in recent days. He's been swinging it great. That's hit into the shift. Long throw. It'll skip off the dirt and an infield hit for Freeman. Tell you who got fooled there was Connor Gillespie. He's the third baseman that was shifted over to that side of the infield. And when Freddie went out to get that pitch, he almost crossed over to go to his right, and then Freddie hooked it back to his left. And basically took Gillespie out of the play. So no trouble for Freeman tonight two hits and three tries and the long throw is what gave him an extra step and allowed him to beat the play at first. Here's Matt Kemp he's struck out twice. And some margin missed. Ball one low.
A lot of breaking balls for Matt Kemp tonight. And a sharply hit ball. Crawford dives. 360 spin and a perfect throw. What a play by Brandon Crawford to rob Matt Kemp. And the Braves are down in the fifth inning. 6 0 San Francisco in game one. Fifth inning and AT&T Park has some really cool features here. One of these being a real retired cable car. This was one that was actually in service for years and now it's here for fans to enjoy. All around me is standing room only area and this cable car is open to anybody who wants to come in, climb, take pictures, eat. There's uh, Ghirardelli's, which is the really famous chocolate store around here. You have the ice cream people are eating on it, but lots of pictures being taken. Another really unique way to watch the ball game like I showed showed you earlier down there watching it from behind the wall. They've really done a good job here at AT&T Mark Park making it a very unique experience for the fans. You're right about that Kelsey as we say so many times when we come here fans shouldn't be forced to watch a baseball game in a place like this. <laughs> <laughs> what a view. Event. I mean she's got a perfect view out there not only of the beautiful baseball field but if Kelsey turns around and goes to the other side of the cable car she can look out and see McCovey Cove San Francisco Bay and the city of Oakland way out in the distance that is if she's not wind blown <laughs> here in the bottom of the fifth inning yeah. John Gant's on to pitch his 13th game for the Braves and he promptly gives up a first pitch single to Buster Posey. He was called back up and pitched on the 22nd at Arizona and inning two hits and a run. So all the talk about the Giants offense struggling certainly hasn't come true tonight. They have six runs now eight hits and they've batted just four times. Here's Crawford infield hit a run scored. And a strikeout. It's always an interesting series when the Braves play the Giants, but with the ascension of Dansby Swanson to the major leagues, I think it'll be fun to watch the comparisons of Dansby and Brandon Crawford. As Dansby has been compared very favorably to the skill set of the Giants shortstop. This ball's in dirt. No chance for Flowers. Posey moves up to second with nobody out. Projecting what a player is going to be is 
one of the most difficult things that a scouting department will have. And I'm in no way saying that Dansby Swanson's going to turn into Brandon Crawford. He might be better than Brandon Crawford. He's handled all those comparisons very well. He wants to be the best Dansby Swanson he can be. However, if you look at what Crawford has already done, he is a really good player. And the Braves will be thrilled if this is the kind of shortstop Dansby Swanson grows into. I think everybody was surprised last year when Crawford won the gold glove over Andrelton Simmons, especially when Simmons was then honored with the Defensive Player of the Year award by another sporting goods company. Two balls, two strikes from John Gant. Rolled foul at first. Crawford's a career 246 hitter. He's doing better than that this season at 272. He's worked at it to make himself a good hitter. He's a guy, because of his defense, he's in there every day. So it doesn't matter if it's left handed pitchers or not, he's going to play, and he's just a left handed hitter, not a switch hitter. High fly ball to right. That's going to chase Marquecas back to within a step of the track. Tagging is Posey. He'll head to third. And that's where he'll stand with one out. Productive out for Crawford. That ball carried a long way. The wind's really gusting, as we saw in that report from Kelsey. And glad you brought up that Rawlings Gold Glove Award. Did you know in the history of the San Francisco Giants, there are only two shortstops who've ever won a gold glove out here? Crawford's one of them. You know who the other one was? Rich Amaral. No. <laughs> but a teammate of Rich Amaral's hmm. in Seattle. Omar Vizquel. Correct. They won it in 2005 and 2006. That's how long it was between shortstops and gold gloves for San Francisco. A single, a strikeout, an RBI, and a run for Brandon Belt. Infield creeps in as Gant evens the count. Good off speed pitch there. Gap in left center field. Nobody's getting that. It bounces off the 382 sign. And Brandon Belt doubles home Buster Posey. It's 7 0. And he has snapped out of it tonight. Breaking ball, I believe. Remember, it was Gantz Vulcan changeup that was hit out of the ballpark by Goldschmidt the other night to end the ball game. And that off speed pitch left up and hit hard. Joe Panic, a two run double in the first. He also flat out to left. The Giants have scored seven runs. Yeah, this has not at all been the kind of game that Brian Snitker and his staff was hoping for after last night's good ball game. All around good game. It did not get on the plane to San Francisco. 
some base running mistakes and defensive miscues. Mental mistake defensively on the throw again by NCRT. And another short outing by a starter. Yeah. Four innings for De La Cruz, six runs. Panic's a first rounder for the Giants. They got him in 2011. And he hits this with a frame. Nice play on a hard hit ball. No third, two outs. Panic came up in 2014, hit 305 in 73 games for San Francisco. He was a big part of their stretch run. Uh -huh. Helped him win a championship that year. Made the All Star team last season. In 100 games last year, Panic made two errors. That's impressive. He spent some time on the disabled list this year, too. He was missing in action. And here's Connor Gillespie. I'll be inter interested to see how Jose Boshi uses Eduardo Nunez. We saw Nunez with the Minnesota Twins. Well, after they traded away Duffy, it seemed pretty apparent that he would be the third baseman to take over there, but he hasn't hit well. He had a one for 11 road trip. That was a good pitch, even count. San Francisco got Nunez on July 28th for minor league left handed pitcher. Adalberto Mejia. Ripped down the right field line and foul. That's the change up again. Going to need some work. I don't know if that was the changeup or the curveball, but it was not where he wanted it. Connor Gillespie, a big Oklahoma Sooner football fan. Is he? Yep. Now he's he, he's got to be messed up. Born in Omaha, Nebraska, lives in Wichita, Kansas, but likes Oklahoma football. You, know, you can be born just about anywhere and be a fan <laughs> of OU football. <laughs> Maybe not Stillwater, but just right. about anywhere else. <laughs> he was the opening day third baseman for the White Sox in 2014. Went to the Angels, and the Giants got him back. He began his career as a San Francisco Giant. In fact, was a first round sandwich pick in 2008. Got to the big leagues that year. Is that right? Yeah. 2009, A ball. 2010, double A. 2011, triple A. And the big leagues. So it's been a long winding road for Gillespie to get back to San Francisco. Pitch popped up. Adonis Garcia foul ground is slowing and on the green grass makes the catch. And that retires the side. A run two hits. More for San Francisco. They lead 7-0.
Crawfords, and there are the two Brandons, Brandon Crawford, Brandon Belts. They obviously are each other's best friends, <laughs> biggest fans. <laughs> and they have a very unique blog, do they? It's called the Brandon Blog. I mean, it's a very creative name. And in their latest issue, they reviewed the latest Hollywood hits, including Bad Moms, Sausage Party, Jason Bourne, and that's it. At first, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, that they've got a blog and they do that stuff together. That's probably a lot of fun for them. A line drive by Marquez is on the first pitch of the inning. Span to his right, cut it off, and it's a long single for Nick. At first, when I saw that picture, I thought it was like the, those family photographs where they're all wearing scotch plaid suits. Awkward family photos? Yes. Yeah. Yep. But in the blog, uh, Brandon Crawford has a great story that was dated on August 16th. And kind of interesting. He said, this is baseball in a nutshell. I landed in the record books with seven hits on Monday night. The day before I went 0 for 4, the day after I went 0 for 4. It's the crazy thing about this game. And he said to try to make sense of it, you would go crazy. So check it out. As Tyler Flowers swings and misses, he's walked and grounded out. Brandon Kniff just up from the minor leagues. Pitch the sixth inning. That is, if the Braves can get the lineup down to the pitcher's spot. Flowers, the sixth place man. And now, one and one. Kniff is just playing a little catch right now, but you know, I'm of the mind that if he does come up, the pitcher's spot does come up here, depending on the situation. If it's still seven to one, let's say, you know, that, that there's a little something going on, then why not save the bullpen and let Gann hit for himself and keep pitching? Yeah, there's a, a school of thought. Sometimes you have to sacrifice an inning or two, and sometimes a game to try to win the next two in a series. Well, you did point out correctly that last night everybody got a, a day off except for Jim Johnson, so everybody's well rested down there or should be. Ball two strikes. As Flowers goes down swinging, that is number six for Samarja. And Jace Peterson's the batter. Well, we assume there'll be pitching reinforcements here in about five days. September 1st means you can expand the rosters. But the ripple effect of all of these short or relatively short outings by the Braves starters has really taken its toll, beginning with the series against the Minnesota Twins back in Atlanta. Braves relievers threw eight and a third innings in that two game set, and in those eight and a third innings, the relief core alone threw over 200 pitches. And that has been a recurring theme. Perhaps not as many innings pitched per game, but deep counts. Lots of walks and lots of work. Yeah, but you know what? September 1st, uh, while reinforcements would certainly be welcome with Gwinnett either close to or already clinching a playoff spot, Mississippi definitely in position to go into uh, postseason play. You're not, it's not like you want to strip those two clubs of. Any chance they might have to put a championship on the board. Yeah, that's an excellent point. As Span's going to track that one down. The other thing, too, these guys are sitting on the couch playing Stratomatic baseball. They're pitching, too. They've logged their share of innings as well. Right, so right. there'll be some different faces, some fresh faces, but not necessarily some fresh arms. So. 
If the starters don't start taking the ball deeper in the game with more consistency, it's going to be a long month of September. Here's Swanson, an infield hit. He's also grounded out. Sixth inning, 7 0 San Francisco. A strike. Mets beat the Phillies 9 4, as we told you. Pirates beat Milwaukee 5 3. That's rare for Pittsburgh. They've won two in a row at Miller Park, which has been a house of horrors for them. Arizona leads the Reds 2 1 in the ninth inning. A long way to go in that one. Broken bat. Crawford's going to have to hurry. Bare hand try. Throw to first, and he made a terrific play. Outstanding. With a bare hand, Crawford charged, grabbed, and threw a seed to first. That takes care of Dansby Swanson, and the Braves got him by a step. by former Brave Bud Norris and here is your playoff picture at the moment the Cardinals and Giants would be the wild card teams Miami a game and a half back Pittsburgh two and a half out the Cubs have the best record working in National League play now remember the Giants have played the Dodgers 13 times this year the Giants hold a 7 6 season series lead and play them seven times in the final 13 days of the regular season including the last three games of the year here that wild card thing is going to be crazy those are all pretty good ball clubs all have had their share of injuries this year but they could all make a solid run at the end and get in any of those uh, four teams below San Francisco because the Giants are going to have a fight on their hands with the Dodgers but those other four teams just get hot. That ball is whacked towards center by Gorkis Hernandez. And there's the first out. And sometimes it only takes a week, you know, just go six and one one week and you're, you're in pretty good shape. So only two games separate the Dodgers and Giants. And the final three games between those two bitter rivals will be even more special here at AT&T Park. Those will be the final three regular season games broadcast by Vince Scully. He's going to make the trip from Los Angeles to San Francisco to be behind the microphone here. And as heated as the Dodgers Giants rivalry will be that is going to be a love fest I would imagine by these great fans here in San Francisco. And how fitting is it 
that it's New York born and bred Vin Scully calling a Dodgers Giants game for his regular season finale. Yeah, it'll be a good weekend. Jeff Samarja has doubled and scored. He's doing most of his damage on the mound. Six innings of shutout ball as he'll have a seat. And has his first strikeout. And one away. Giants got a big lift last night. Matt Moore got to within one out of a no hitter against L.A. last night. It was Corey Seager on his bobblehead night that broke it up with a ninth inning hit. Last Giants pitcher to have a no no broken up with two outs in the ninth or later was Yusmero Petit against the Diamondbacks in 2013. And what's so interesting about Seeger doing the damage last night, according to the Elias Sports Bureau, each of the last three no hit bids that stopped or were stopped with two outs in the ninth inning were stopped by a hit by a rookie. Huh. Or a Seeger last night. Joey Butler of the Rays singled off Carlos Carrasco of Cleveland in 2015. And the Braves all remember Justin Bohr versus Shelby Miller. Well, and the, the base hit was just fought off. It was, I don't know if it broke Seeger's bat or not, but it was just a flare into right field it was really disappointing especially for Giants fans and Matt Moore so that was his first win as a Giant Went through 130 something pitches last night yeah Two balls, two strikes. Line over Swanson. Denard Span with a two hit game. That was a nice swing. Just kind of let his hands do the work here and flip the ball out over Swanson's head on a pitch. Looked like it was up and away. No, nope. a little bit down and away. Here's Angel Pagan. He hit his ninth home run in the second inning. A two out two run shot. The 104th homer for the Giants. You know that the Braves don't hit a lot of homers. In fact this series features the two National League clubs that have hit the fewest home runs. That has hit 89. However, that has dramatically turned over the last 60 games or so. And are out of play. Braves have hit 62 homers in their last 64 games. And this one was a big, big fly. Shows you what kind of damage you can do if you get the big end of the bat, get that barrel out front. It really jumped. Nothing in two. John Gant did a real respectable job for the Braves as a starting pitcher. One and two record, a 338 ERA, 18 and two thirds innings and four starts, but then he had to leave the mound after straining an oblique. 
Just now working his way back to the big club. And a slow roller hit toward Adonis. He scoops it up and drops the ball. And now breaking toward third is Span. Gant's throw is going to beat him. And a heads up play by John Gant and by Swanson to get to the third base bag. Antonard Span got a little greedy. And that ends the San Francisco sixth. Night defensively, this was a heads up play by Dansby Swanson. Now they charged Adonis an error here, which was a tough error. But then Gant and Swanson hooked up to nail Span, who thought he might be able to catch the Braves unaware. So we head to the seventh inning. Chase Darno will lead off. Gant, two innings of one run ball. Three hits, a strikeout, no walks. And that's an one in. Two and O oh is your count. Chase looking for his first hit of the road trip. He's 0 for 7. And Stan, I bet you didn't know. Chase Darno has the highest pinch hit batting average in baseball. He's hitting 400, eight pinch hits in 20 at bats. And he draws a four pitch walk. Ander Inciarte led off the game with a double. He's 0 for 2 since, and he is our Georgia Lottery hitting the jackpot feature. Last seven games, he's been red hot, including extra base hits. Samarja, who's going to have his bullpen get busy here shortly, he's only had one clean inning, and yet he's at 97 pitches here in the seventh inning. And after a horrible start, first and second inning, Left runners at second and third in the first. Bases loaded, nobody out in the second, got out of it. He's managed his pitch count pretty well since then. He's trying to get to seven innings or better for an 11th time. He had a stretch in early May where he was absolutely overpowering. Four straight starts of seven and two thirds or better for the Giants. He allowed five earned runs in that stretch and actually lost a game. The Rockies beat him in one of those games, two zip. To 
tonight he hasn't had to have great stuff. As the Giants gave him five runs in the first two innings. Bouncing ball up the middle. Panic steps on the bag. Throw to first and not in time. Ender hustled down the line. Panic could have flipped to Crawford. He took it himself, and that cost him an extra step. Can't get as much on your throw either. That appears there'll be no challenge by the Giants. So Enciarte trades places with Darno. One on, one out. Runners in the fifth and sixth, but still only 10 pitch innings. Left side, Crawford fires quickly to second and to first again. A half step too late. Again, Gillespie. Dives in front of him, but look how quickly Crawford got rid of that ball. Oh, I don't know what happened there to Adonis. He quit running. Maybe he thought that was the third out of the inning. Again, no challenge by the Giants. The score is saying that Gillespie actually touched that ball before it got to Crawford. Hmm. Now Samarja waits a moment while Gillespie moves over into a three man shift for Freddie Freeman. Two more hits for the Braves' first baseman. About whom we were all concerned before first pitch. Would he be able to go after that tumble into the seats in Phoenix? And answer the question as to whether or not there are other places where the fans are sitting below field level. Yeah, they're here in San Francisco too. Between the end of the Braves dugout and the right field bullpen. And a waist high fence. Present ball dudes are on assignment. So Marger really wanted that pitch, didn't get it. Thought he made a perfect pitch to strike out a tough hitter. He was on a real roll. Laz Diaz said no, it was outside. And it was. Mile high fly ball to straightaway center. And Denard Span is there. And that ends the inning. Seventh inning stretch at AT&T Park. It's all Samarja and the Giants in game one.
back to October 8th, 2010, Game 2 of the National League Division Series, Braves and Giants. And after the Braves rally for three in the eighth to tie it 4-4, Rick and Keel hits a homer into McCovey Cove in the 11th, and that gave the Braves the win, and it stunned this crowd here in San Fran. Did you see how far that ball landed out into the cove? I, watching that replay, I don't, didn't remember it going that far. I knew it was a splash homer, but that ball was smoked. So Brandon Kniff is on for his fourth appearance. His first since he was called up this time. Second, ten, second stint. Announced sellout crowd again in San Fran tonight, 41,283. And they have seen Buster Posey come back home with two hits and two runs. And that missed outside. One ball, one strike. Talked earlier about the Hall of Fame candidacy of Bruce Boshi. I don't think there's any doubt that when he's through managing, he will end up enshrined in Cooperstown like Bobby Cox. And I know I've said it before, but at the conclusion of that Braves Giants series, the Giants did something that still is one of the classiest things I've ever seen done on a baseball field. You might recall they clinched the series against the Braves. And before the Giants began celebrating, every single member of their ball club turned and doffed their cap and saluted Bobby Cox, who was managing his final game in the major leagues. It was and a special moment. It, it, was, it, it was just absolutely great. As Brandon Crawford bats, he's one for three. And didn't get it, strike one. It's one of the many things that hockey has right. The totally end of a hard-fought series in the playoffs, no matter how tough it was, there is a handshake. I was about to say that that's probably as close to that hockey handshake that you'll yeah. see or, or have seen, perhaps. Hunter Strickland's getting loose. Looks like Samarja will be done after seven effective innings of seven-hit baseball. It's an even year, and the Giants are in the playoff race. Hard to bet against them, isn't it? Yep. World champs in 10, 12, and 14. They've got some work to do in 16. They trail the Dodgers by two. Swing and a miss. Crawford is down. Good fastball from Brandon. It's his first strikeout. Braves have struck out four Giants hitters tonight. Giants won the division in 2010 and 2012 by two and eight games, respectively, on their way to the World Series. And it is a wild card team in 14. That's the beauty of that wild card race. Once you get in, the slate's clean, and whoever gets hot has a chance to run the table. Just ask the Marlins. They've won two World Championships. Making it as a wild card. Giants have done it once. I think it was 12 that they played the Reds and were down 0 2 in the division series and lost both games at home and came back to win all three after that and get hot, stay hot, and win it all. They lost 5 2 and 9 0 here in San Francisco. And that 9 0 game wasn't that close. Lined into center. And on an 0 2 pitch, that takes care of Brandon Belt. Three out, three down, and the Giants' seventh. We're off to the eighth.
In a moment, first let's take a look at our Rocket Arms brought to you by Quicken Loans, starting pitchers comparison for game one. Well, no one would have ever guessed that Jeff Samarja was going to go seven innings the way things looked in the first two innings. But he did, and they were shutout innings with six strikeouts and three walks. And another short outing for De La Cruz, who stands to go 0 and 7 if the Braves can't rally. Arianza and Strickland are the San Francisco changes. Strickland will bat fourth. Adrianza will bat ninth. And Matt Kemp will lead off the eighth. Connor Strickland's a Georgia boy from Thomaston, lives in Griffin. And as you can see there, throws hard. Connor Strickland graduated from Pike County High School in Zebulon, Georgia. Back on the football team, baseball star too. He's 27 years old. He'll be 28 in late September. That's out of play. Talked a little bit about Samarja's split finger pitch. Strickland throws one on occasion. It's almost like in the Giants' DNA. Roger Craig was such a great pitching coach uh, in the big leagues and especially under Sparky Anderson in Detroit taught those guys all how to throw split finger pitches. Then he came to San Francisco as the manager taught his pitchers here how to throw it. This guy really throws across his body steps to the third baseline and then back to home plate. Got to be strong to do that and still throw 99. A little looper down the line. That's going to bounce by the Braves bullpen. It's still two and two. Dodgers still holding their 4 3 lead over the Cubs. That game's in the eighth inning down at Dodger Stadium. Fans want to see those flags trade places by the end of the weekend. Giants are doing their part tonight, up seven zip. One down. Braves Live presented by Xfinity is coming up tonight. Andre Aldrich has the hosting duties back in our Atlanta studios. Not much good news to report tonight. Joel De La Cruz started, gave up six runs, seven hits in four innings. The Braves did not help him defensively. They didn't help him on the base pass, running into it out. Jace Peterson was hit by a batted ball. Atlanta had five runners left on base in the first two innings against Samarja, the most critical innings you face against the shaggy haired Giants right hander. Couldn't get anything done, and then. He went into shutdown mode and struck out six in his seven innings. Now you can tell the game's getting late in San Francisco because the Seagulls are circling. No, no, cleanup crew. Ah. And there they are. Taking residence on the poop deck. <laughs> Ground ball to second. In the old ballpark at Candlestick, they have the quad of Candlestick. You might want to break that out if you're sitting beneath the birds on the upper deck in mid left field. Had the what? Huh? Had the what? The quad of Candlestick. Remember how cold it used to get? Uh huh. It was a uh, like a medal that they would give the fans that uh, they could pin on their jackets if they survived a night game when the I wind see. was really whipping around. 
That one goal looks irritated by the flag flipping at him. <laughs> used to be so bad at Candlestick Park. It's a true story. My dad threw a, a promo out the window one night because he was just frustrated early in the game. Seventh inning, the wind blows, the promo blew right back into the booth. Yeah. <laughs> Balls, two strikes. Down the line. So you start mentioning the seagulls, they get selfish and get greedy about airtime, and then more and more start to circle. Here they come. Nothing in two. It's interesting how here they've got them trained to work in their own section. Like homing pigeons. And they're banded. I mean if you if you're seen eating in a section with the wrong color band on your leg then you don't get to come back tomorrow night. And we've had the same look that seagull has had quite a few times this year. Like, what in the world's going on out here tonight? Two and two. Up on aisle three. Two balls, two strikes. Ground ball, two short. Adrianza with the throw, and that takes care of Tyler Flowers and the Braves in the eighth. Three out, three down. This game's for the Birds. It's 7 0 Giants. Bobby Cox, Saturday, September 17th. The first 20,000 fans get a Bobby Cox carried off bobblehead brought to you by Coca Cola and Delta Airlines. Visit Braves.com slash tickets and get your seats today. All Giants, 7 0 in game one. And what has been a very appealing night for the home club. Good one. 
Giants are only two and ten in series openers in the second half of the season. They're hoping for some help from the Cubs who got a Chris Bryant home run tonight. Bryant has 34 of them for Chicago. But L.A. leads 4-3. That game's in the bottom of the eighth. Corey Guerin, former Brave, loosens up in the Giants' bullpen as Joe Panic leads off for San Francisco. He's doubled home a pair of runs. Be real nice if Kniff can finish this up um, and have a quick inning not force Brian Snicker to get anyone else up in the bullpen or even worse into the game. Game two here tomorrow night. We will join you at 905 for first pitch Eastern time. Mike Fulton Evich and Jake Peavy will meet in the second game. Braves are stare down Madison Bumgarner here on Sunday. The Braves have not announced who will start that game yet. Perhaps we'll know more on Braves Live. Jesse Wingard will get all the sound from the Braves clubhouse afterwards. The pitch buzzed the tower and Panic got out of the way. Two and two. Bumgarner, by the way, is already over 200 strikeouts in 180, 180 innings. Full count pitch for Panic and a base on balls. That is the first walk issued by the Braves staff tonight. MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. That includes a free subscription to At Bat Premium, the number one app for live baseball, blackout, and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Line to third, and good base running by Panic to get back to first. One out. Corkis six, six. Hernandez is the hitter. This is a big night for the Giants. Number one, their offense came to life, scoring seven runs. Number two, they're leading the game. Number three, they've been able to do this without Hunter Pence. Gets another day of rest. Don't know if we'll see Hunter in this series or not as he's trying to come back from hamstring surgery. A hamstring that began to bark down in Los Angeles. Yeah, I think I'd be inclined to give him another day since things have gone so well tonight. He's visualizing good health. Back. And 0 2. It's the right hamstring for Hunter Pence. And in 23 games since coming back from the DL, it hasn't gone very well for him. He's hitting 220. Missed 48 games with that bad hamstring. And when he went out last year that was just critical for the Giants they were way over 500 when he was able to play and way in the weeds when he was hurt he doesn't know any way any way to possibly play except full tilt so yeah. if you put him in the game he doesn't know how to run three quarter speed to try not to re injure that leg he's going to be going max effort. Last year the Giants were 35 and 17 when Hunter Pence started 49 and 61 when he wasn't able to play. So 
missed 110 games last season. But still, San Francisco won 84 games. Fly ball toward left. And it's slicing toward the bullpen fire. It's 1-1. One one. And so that alone tells you that at Hunter Pence played, we might be talking about a back-to-back -back World Series championship San Francisco team. But we'll never know. Say Drianza, it's only been up 22 games, 30 at bats. He's got shin guards and foot guards on both legs and feet. Had a rough time of it up here already. Shin guard there, foot guard over there. Got an elbow guard on too. Nope. Another ball in the dirt. No chance for Tyler Flowers. Enough for the wild pitch. Baseball bloodlines for Adrianza run deep. His dad grew up with Ozzie Guillen, who is Ozzie's, who uh, is Adrianza's godfather. Two two he is hit a mile high right. And Nick Markakis is going to catch that. And a good job by Brandon Kniff tonight. Two scoreless innings. Last chance for Atlanta. We go to the ninth inning. Synovis, the bank of here, Georgia Power, and Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience sports. 7-0 San Francisco. The Braves hope to avoid a shutout in the first game here at AT&T Park. The man standing in the way of that is former Brave Corey Guerin. 45th game for Corey, 3-1, a 489 ERA. 12 walks, 31 strikeouts in 38 innings. Chase Peterson will lead off the Braves' ninth. Trevor Brown is going to give Buster Posey the final inning off. He's in harness behind the plate. A miraculous comeback. The Braves are going to fall to seven and twenty-one against the West this year, and three and twelve on the road. One ball, one strike. Only about 
Braves are trying to play foul. They, the Braves are 22 and 32 in this ballpark. Tough place for them to win. A few minutes past 10 o'clock local time, 7 0 San Francisco. One ball, two strikes. He went around and Garen takes care of Jace Peterson for the first out. Christian recording artist Matthew West performs after the game Sunday September 18th. It's a free concert and limited VIP field passes are available for the show for just ten dollars a piece. Get them today online at Braves.com slash faith day. It's a pretty good look at the bridge isn't it. That's the Bay Bridge. That's very cool. Uh, sparkly, farkly. Mm -hmm. and, and anything I mean, to distract the drivers when they're driving across the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Samarja Strickland, now Garen for San Francisco. Dansby Swanson hits one to short and a strong throw takes care of him Swanson one for four tonight and the Braves are down to their final out Giants are not away from their ninth shutout of the year and Brandon Snyder will be the batter Brandon was brought up while Atlanta was down in Phoenix. One hopper hit to second panic with a nice play and the Giants have beaten the Braves seven nothing and now they'll turn and scoreboard watch because the Cubs have just tied the Dodgers in the ninth inning. So the race in the West could be separated by one game San Francisco holds serve on their home field. They got five early runs for Jeff Samarja and that was more than enough for the Giants tonight. Well they got five early and the Braves didn't get any when they had guys in scoring position in the first and second inning he was able to shut the door after that. So Jeff Samarja goes to 11 and 9 on the year Joel De La Cruz suffers his seventh loss without a victory for the Braves 107 pitches for the Giants right hander as they take a 3 2 season series lead over the Braves more recap coming from AT&T Park after a break. 